Javier, the Correa Norma L, how, how new is this machine to your range? Well, we started the Norma L like uh, one year and a half. And what's different to the Norma? Well, basically, we had some requirements from our customers uh, for making large components, longer parts, and we decided to make or to start the first traveling column machine in this factory. Okay, the first traveling column in this factory, not the first traveling column from no, Correct. Not, not of course, not of course. We have done many of them, but... So in your eyes then, what's different to the traveling column mechanism to having a fixed bed? What's the advantage for bigger parts like this? Well, first of all, the x-axis motion mechanism changed completely. We, we, we move from the rotating ball screw to rack and pinion. So the, it permits us to, to move a, a bigger mass and to, and, to, and to go for longer travels. So you're talking about the column moving there, correct? Exactly, column moving. And would I be right in saying that the very nature of the fact that the, the bed is fixed, you've got a much bigger opportunity for larger x-axis envelopes? Exactly, and, and you can also load heavier components on top of the table. And, and, and more important thing, this machine is much more flexible because you can work with different working areas so you can save the load and the load time. Okay, so now if the, the bed is fixed and the part is on the bed, you're not moving the component to the spindle, you're moving the spindle to the part, which is more rigid in your eyes? Normally it's, it's, it's better for roughing because the, the, the dampening capability is, is better compared to the moving table, yes. And in comparison to the Norma, are you, are you offering the same technology on the RAM and the, the spindles? Exactly the same, because the set and y-axis in the Norma are exactly the same set and y-axis in the, in the, in the Norma. We always work uh, using the modular engineering of our machines, so we share all the parts, all the components. So how big does this machine go? What's, what's the biggest machine I can get of the Norma L? Well, in x-axis is 8 meters, the maximum length, but in reality the rack and pinion system is a modular system. So uh, in the future, maybe we may be able to, to go further. So you're essentially telling me you could add another table on the end? Yeah, we can make a longer table or we can extend the x-axis travel. And what about the y and the z-axis? Just tell us the biggest on those envelopes. It's exactly as the norma, 1.5 metres in vertical and 1.25 metres in cross. Also, let's talk about partitioning, because one of the things you've mentioned to me is the very fact that with this uh, type of layout, you could be loading a part one end, whilst the other side of the machine is machining, which is different to the fixed bed type. Yeah, it is very interesting because, you know, in this kind of machines to increase the x-axis travel is not very much expensive, but the customers can get the benefit of having two, three, even four working areas. So even if they have to machine smaller parts, they can divide the machine into different working areas so they can save a lot of time while loading and unloading and they don't need to use a pallet changer or more complex systems. And again, when you're looking at wear mechanisms, I think because the table's not moving, you can add more weight to the table without worrying about the inertia of the table continually moving backwards and forwards with a tra traveling column machine. Absolutely. In fact, using a traveling column machine, you always, you always move a fixed mass. The x-axis movement is always a fixed mass compared to the moving table, in which depends on, the on, on, the, on, the, on the how heavy the component is. In Korea, when we, when we build our moving table machines, we always have different parameters depending on the, on the load you put on the, on, onto the table. But of course, the traveling column is always the best in terms of performance because you are always moving the same mass. And it's an ISO 50 machine, isn't it? So is it, what's the cutting performance like on this compared to the Norma because of the points we've spoken about? And where did, where, what can you do on this that you can't do on the, on the Norma machine? Well, yeah, a part of longer parts, obviously. In terms of, of roughing capability, the power and the torque in the Norma is the same as we have in the Norma. Power and torque, but as we said, the, 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 the question is not only how much power and torque you can fit into the spindle, but the question is how the machine, how, how stable is the machine to convert this power into the chips. So in this sense, Norma is a slightly stronger compared to the Norma in terms of dampening capability. So we can say that we can convert more effectively the 33 kilowatts into chips, a slightly better performance compared to the normal. Uh, what, what about growth of machines like this as well? I mean, if you're generating a lot of heat, if you're removing a lot of material, do, do these machines grow? Do you have issues with that? 
Well, I mean, to generate heat when you are cutting is one issue, and the heat that the machine generates by itself is a second issue. For the first issue, normally this is a reason why the customers use coolant or different type of coolant. And, and, but this is a good question because, in fact, when we are selling these machines with a full cover, we always must think about how we are going to remove the, 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 the heat inside of the machine, of the working envelope. When we are selling this uh, open top, uh, as plus one, normally the heat is easily, is easily evacuated from top of the machine. But, uh, and, but it's more important the heat that the machine generates when the machine is moving. And, and do, yeah, and on that basis then, do you have some form of compensation which, which adjusts the machine so you're still being able to machine heavy cuts to tight tolerances? Yeah, we, we always install different ta uh, temperature profs in different uh, structural elements of the machine. And most important thing, we always install profs inside the spindle to control the temperature and to, 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 to compensate the expansion uh, due to this, to this heat generated, yeah. Before we see this cutting, which we're going to do very shortly, I just wanted to ask you two more things. Uh, the, the tool changer on this, is it modular? Can you have different amount of tools? Can you select how many tools you want? And the second thing is having an integrated rotary table or adding a fourth axis unit to these machines. What, what are the answers to those two? Well, the, 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 to, 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 to add a rotary table is something really, really standard in this kind of machines, not only in the, in the traveling column normal, but also in the normal. In the normal, it's more typical to, 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 to use a, a detachable vertical horizontal rotary table that you can put on top of the table when you need. But also, there is a possibility of integrate the rotary table in the bed itself. But, and in this machine, it's, it's much more simple because you, you can have two or three different working areas and one of the working areas with a rotary table and the other working area with a block table. So yeah, it's absolutely common, vertical and horizontal. Uh, so you can have integrated ones as well into the table? Absolutely. We can integrate a rotary table at the same level as the block table. So you can have completely integration. Might seem like a crazy question. Could you have two of, that, two of those, two integrated tables? We have done two integrated tables, of course. And some customers, they want to have in, at both ends two different rotary tables and in the middle a block table, yeah, it's quite common, yeah, of course. And then finally that tool changer, how many tools and is it modular? Usually the same as in the normal, 30, 40, 60 tools, we can go up to 80 tools, but in this case we need to take care of one thing. The tool changer is attached to the column, and in this case we are moving the tool changer. So it will affect the system itself. In the moving table, the tool changer is fixed to the column, but the column is fixed. Good point, I didn't think of that one. So yeah, it's important. And what are you cutting here? And what's, what's special about it? Well, the first thing, especially in this machine, is that we are, uh, we are now using our new 640 high-end controller with our new 640 high-end PLC, in which we have incorporated a lot of functions for uh, improving maintenance operations, more checks on the machines, more di diagnosis masks, and much more health to the operator and to the maintenance departments. And particularly in this machine, we are going now to see a churning by interpolation. This is a function that we had already in the 530 Heineheim, but in the 640 it has been improved. So now we can make complex profiles and use the mill as a turning, as a turning machine, of course. And it's horizontal turning, isn't it, rather than vertical? Yeah, you can, you can apply this, this, this turning in any position of the, of the head. So you, you can even make complex incline operations using this churning capability. And you've created a can cycle that engineers could use if they had one of these machines to do their own horizontal turning. Yeah, we had to create a cycle to operate with our indexing heads because uh, to make the, the, the life of the operators easier. Because uh, in the past, the problem was that high hand can calculate the position of the head, but cannot round the solution considering the indexing. So now we implemented a cycle that can do everything. It can rotate the head, it can incline the coordinate system, and it can take into consideration the heat position we have to calculate the real error. So yeah. All right, go and press cycle start. Thanks, Javier. Thank you. It's clear because you need